Hi, in this video we are going to talk about spinal ependymoma. These are the most frequent intramedullary tumors in adult. We can see them in children and those are mainly sporadically and may be associated with neurofibromatosis 2 or NF2. Uh, these are small intramedullary nodules and can be multiple. The peak incidence for spinal ependymoma is usually in 4th and 5th decades, but these tumors are also occur in young patients. Ependymomas arise from central ependymal canal, so these are frequently found in centrally within the cord. And this central location explains the more frequent sensory symptoms and close proximity to spinothalamic tract. So the diagnosis can be delayed due to motor deficit occur only in late stage of the disease. The ependymomas related to NF2 are usually asymptomatic and these intramedullary ependymomas most often found in cervical cord and less frequently we can see in upper thoracic cord. Ependymomas are categorized as low grade WHO grade 2 with a benign indolent cause. So these tumors are well demarcated and compress the adjacent cord rather than infiltrating it. We can see the malignant histological subtypes including anaplastic ependymoma which are included into WHO3 we can see rarely. Usually there are four histological subtypes of uh, CNS ependymomas uh, includes cell cellular, papillary, clear cell and tenacistic but cellular form is most common intramedullary variant and the, the prognosis of spinal ependymoma depend on tumor grade, degree of resection and the state of CSF dissemination. When considered in imaging, CT may show canal widening, scoliosis and posterior vertebral body scalloping. On MRI, we can see central well circumscribed ISO2 hypointense lesion on T2 weighted images and ISO O hyperintense lesion on T2. Most of the ependymomas are avidly enhancing and homogeneous in 91% of cases. These are usually well defined. It allows total removal of tumor in the most cases. So these are mainly compressed rather than infiltration and we can see a cleavage plane occasionally. DTA may show fiber tract displacement rather than interrupt. The mean size of ependymoma usually within three vertebral segments, but when considered in astrocytoma, it is very extensive. We can see capsign in 20 to 25 cases. This is correspond to low signal intensity areas on T2 and gradient T2 star images. And we can see the capping at the both side of the tumor limit. These caps are hemosiderin deposits due to chronic hemorrhage of the tumor. If you can see the cap sign, it is highly suggestive of diagnosis of ependymoma. You can see the associated satellite cyst in 60% of cases and these can be very large. Delineation of this cyst is easier after gadolinium injection. You can see syrinx as a characteristic finding especially on cervical ependymoma and you can see the spinal cord edema. It can be variable and you can see in large multi-segmental tumors. 